So this is a uh, Google Maps, Whitewater Bay, right? And all you guys know this stuff, but I, any, I'm gonna pretend like you don't. So very good. Um, we go in at um, Flamingo, which is this little point right here, over here. We go down the Buttonwood Canal to Coot Bay. And then we go through Tarpon Creek out to Whitewater Bay. The first time I went out there and it opened up there, I said, holy Toledo, where am I going? How can I possibly get out of this? And um, I didn't have map, I, I had a map, I didn't have GPS or nothing else. And actually the markers are so far apart they're out of they're out of range. You gotta you gotta take a compass reading, and run on the uh, run on the channel um, to uh, uh, pick up the next marker. But anyway, I you know I had the headline. I'm gonna have five secret spots that I'm gonna share with you guys. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably do more, but I've got five categories, and I'm gonna cover them in terms of categories. So I got creeks, I got points, I got uh, rivers and shoals and flats okay so we'll talk about those generally because uh when you're fishing you're looking for the wind to push the water around the corner uh you like to have uh maybe the tide moving in that direction um you want to uh, have clear water and um uh if it's muddy and stirred up you should probably go look somewhere else because um the the real thing you're looking for is the bait fish the um the uh, fish aren't going to waste their time if there's no bait in the area. They'll just uh, lay down in the holes or, or drift with the current. Um, if they're bait fish in the area, then they'll start hitting. So if you don't see any activity, the area looks dead, looks like nothing's moving. Uh, the fish, according to Henry, will tell you where they're at. So just keep moving. And uh, when I go out there, what I do is I'll hit a place, maybe what, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes and uh then it's time to move on to the next one and try to try to pick a different one of those five types of areas uh to hit so um questions so far no questions all right so this Where's is google this is google maps all right can you see this now did it change yep the yeah. chart catalog okay well this is noah charts the chart catalog and uh, if you click in here, then you can pick um, and uh, you zoom in as a drop down list. You can zoom in, zoom in. And these are the charts in, in Florida. And uh, 11433 is uh, Whitewater Bay. So um, you can download it here. You can download the PDF, or you can download the uh, electronic uh, version of the map. Uh, which is um, 433, uh, which is what I'm using, going to be using tonight, the electronic version. If you click on the PDF, this is the uh, PDF version. You guys have probably already had a copy of it. It's uh, been in uh, Florida Sportsman. Um, the problem with the PDF is you want to move around. You got to do like this, and you got to do like that, and you got to zoom in and out um, with your browser. So it gets to be a little more difficult. But uh, here's Coop Bay and Buttonwood Sound, Flamingo, Coop Bay, and then um, up into Whitewater. So um, uh, what I'm going to do, let's see if you get this. I got to do a share again, right? Hang on. See it fine. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, I use um, what's called Open Chart Plot Navigate. Okay, so now can you see the map? Yeah. This one, this one I can zoom around. Okay, so it's a little bit easier. This is actually the NOAA electronic version of that map. So it's free. OpenCPN is free. Uh, OpenCPN is available for Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux, which is what I'm running here. And um, so anyway, let's do creeks. Okay. So... Um, if I'm going out to Whitewater, there are a number of creeks. Uh, there's a Buttonwood Canal. I suppose you could, you, you know, that's several miles long. So you really wouldn't want to troll that unless you made a mission of it. I'm sure if you did troll it, you'd probably find some tarpon in there. Um, 
Henry, you got an opinion on that? You know, I, I, every time I go out, I see fish rolling in there. You can catch uh, but You got to go there. there. I think you got to go there when it's quiet. Yeah. They, they, just, they just go, they just get knocked down with all the boats running over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, there. So then in Coop Bay, you can run over here. Here's Coop Bay Pond, which is a, beside the road. So if you have Herman, can I say something? Yeah. There was a guy fishing on that special ginu right at the entrance there. Um, right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he like, you know, that's a spot that yes. seems, you know, attracts some stuff right there. Yeah, they don't. Uh, well, I, I can't switch back to the other one. I have to change the share again. But um, uh, there's actually here. Um, there's a little creek right beside the entrance to that. Mm -hmm. and he was fishing in there, but you can run over here. And uh, depending on the tide, you can work the mouth of this. And there's, a, I think there's a little bridge or something there. But anyway, you can fish into that little creek. If it's running out, you fish the outside. If you, if you, you're, if it's going in, you could cast into it. Um, that's a good place. Um, you know, all these places you go there a hundred times, you may get what two, five hits. You know, five percent hit ratio on these places. So you just got to keep moving along till you find the activity and try to find something. Uh, this is Mud Lake, and there's a, a, a little creek here that goes into Mud Lake, and it drains in, and Dr. Lloyd Rubel says uh, if he goes out there and sees white foam coming out of that creek, <laughs> he's going to go straight over there. There's someone peeing. Where, yeah. where is that at, Herman? I didn't see it. Here's Coop Bay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah I can see Coop Bay. Okay, right here, right here. Here's Hold Mud Lake. And Coop yeah, Bay, right Canal. in there. Right yeah, in there. The Lake Canal. Yeah, I love that area. Yeah, so it, it, it will flow into and out of Mud Lake uh, with the tide. So if it's falling out of there, again, that's a perfect ambush area right in there. If the tide's going in, you'd go cast into the mouth of it and uh, see what you can find in there. Um, so that's a potentially productive area. Um, this is my favorite here is Tarpon Creek. I mean, it's so obvious. They got a no wake zone. Um, you take a, uh, uh, four inch or, um, red and white, uh, Yozuri crystal minnow and you troll it. It runs down about three to four feet behind the boat. Um, and you just troll all the way up and down in there. Um, and, uh, you know, you may be surprised. You think you hit a log and all of a sudden you got a snook. Uh, it's called Tarpon Creek. They're tarpon in there. He had um, a trout on the way in. Remember, yeah. Michael got oh, a trout. Uh, Mike hit a trout up here at the mouth of it. Again, the tide yeah. was going right. in this direction. And so, again, uh, uh, based on the direction of the tide, there's bait and stuff coming out of there. So there will be fish laying in the, in the flat out here and also on this side over here. Uh, we've caught, I've caught redfish over there with Will and a couple other people before. So... If the tide's pushing in or pushing out over here, uh, Mike got a, uh, a trout over there. Uh, Pablo got an incredible uh, snook in there one time, surprised the heck out of him, and uh, several other people. But uh, this is uh, productive, just to troll through there. And uh, you'd be surprised. And all these little corners here, you know, the currents run around those points, and um, you, get your, you get your little Yozuri red next to it. I think the, the motor, uh, twirling the propeller um, draws up the fish because they hear the splash, 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 splash with the trolling propeller and the bubbles. So that will pull them up. So I guess those are my favorite creeks. I, you know, if you don't have a hook in the water, you're not going to catch a fish. So I'll troll that every time. There's jewfish in that creek too. Yeah, but they're going to be down on the bottom. Uh, they may come up. Yeah, they will. Yeah, in, in the, they'll come up and hit that lure too. Yeah on the tree, trees that are down in the edge of the water on dead yeah. tide. Yeah. Be prepared. Whatever you, whatever you hit in there, you think it's going to be a log and it's not, if it starts wiggling. <laughs> uh, not... Herman. On Yo. The, okay. Looking, looking Northeast from there. Yeah. You see that too? No, no, no. On the inside, the, the good bay. Up in here. Right. Up in there, uh, there, there's a channel, there's a big flat and there's a channel that runs Longs around the around the edge of the mangroves. Yes, I have fished that very successfully in the past. You get a uh, trout up there or snook? trout, trout and a uh, small snook. The the yeah. trouts were legal, and, yeah. and and one time uh, we I came across a, 
school of huge tarpon, man. The, they only lasted like like 15 seconds on the line. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they'll break it right off. They'll break it right off. I run with it. You got you to have your uh, heavy-duty rig out there, but that's the last thing you expect in two feet of water is yeah. a 90-pound tarpon. Yeah, these were bigger than 90 pounds. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, the big ones. The big yes, ones. the big ones. They were yeah. scary. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's creeks, right? So I got one, two, three before I even get into uh, whitewater. Um, then uh, I like to go around this way instead of running up the middle. Um, you know, you can, you can run. Well, I'm going to lose it. You can run for 45 minutes. I'll go switch to another map. You can run for 45 minutes and go all the way up to Ponce de Leon Bay if you want. You still got me? You can still see what I'm doing, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, here's middle keys here. I probably don't ever go past middle midway pass just because I run out of time. Okay. Um, but I'll come out of here and uh, People used to tell me, well, all this dead wood over here, well, I've cast this whole shoreline without much success. Um, but there's a uh, top secret point. I'm going to have to swear all you guys to blood secrecy here. Okay. This is uh, this whole shoreline here with this opening. There's always a current usually pushing through this direction. And um, around this point and also around this point, um, if you see the current and you see the slick, right, David? Um, yes. <laughs> you know, it's going to be productive. So I start over here. I use the trolling motor. I drift, come all the way around and right in here. And right there is where David caught his snook. Right there. Yep. <laughs> okay. And um, the snook, actually, the water was super high. We had like a spring tide. So the water was all the way up in there. If the water's down a little bit, the snook are not going to be right up against the shoreline. They're going to be maybe 20 feet out. And they're looking at the shoreline watching to see if something comes out of the mangroves or if bait fish come along in there. But this whole area here it drains, it drains all of us drains. And um, the other thing is right now there's so much fresh water that uh, you probably want to look for a higher salinity area rather than a lower salinity area. So these points, you know, this point here, uh, points, point here, point there. <coughs> Um, just points everywhere. Um, pick a point. And if you got the wind pushing around it, um, you know, go upwind and drift around that point and cast toward it and down along the line. And more than likely, something's going to be laying in there waiting for an ambush. So that's my points. Any place in here. Okay. I mean, you can see, pick a point there, pick a point here. Pick a point there. Any of these points. Right, Giuseppe? Giuseppe still there? Right, Giuseppe? Correct, correct. Okay. All right. So then what I'll do is I'll run up here. This is a trick Henry taught me. Uh, this is the entrance to Hell's Bay. There's the East River and, and No Man's River. Um, you can run up here. It's shallow. On the low tide, it's very shallow, uh, but there have been times I've been in there with Henry and there have been redfish just laying up under those mangroves. And you got to pitch like a, a um, you know, a walk the dog or a, uh, or a frozen mullet in there and pull them out, out like you now. would a bass. Pull them out like you would a bass. Right. Um, okay, so then I hit that and obviously there's all these areas up here I'm still not that completely familiar with them, but I run into this creek here and come across. Okay, and it's nice and open. Everything in there is four feet at least, almost always. Okay, I come up in here and uh, we fished that the other day. Um, although we came in this way, David, we came in through here, this shoal. Yeah, the other side. And the right. shoal is interesting because it had. It had yeah puffer fish in there and you throw a rubber out there and you come back with half of it. Eat, eat up your gulps. They're huh. crazy. It's the yeah. most crazy thing I've ever seen. You know, but uh, anyway, you still got current uh, and wind pushing across that. Um, it's much wider than that. It's about 100 yards wide. And you come in on the left side and then there's a, there's a dead tree on the right side. You know, so 
That's kind Are you of saying a, there's a passageway through that four? We went right there's through there, yeah. Okay. Right through there. I see it. Yeah. And, but any of these islands, you see, they've got shoals around them, any of these little isolated islands, okay, any of them. Uh, they got shoals around them, and we actually went up. Uh, where do we go? We went up in here, into this island here, yeah, this little yeah. island, this little island. And we fished around the edge of the island, so I would call that shoals, okay? So any of your little islands that you got in the areas in there uh, that you can get into, um, they're surrounded by uh, these, uh, it'll go up to the mangrove, but there may be a moat under the mangrove, there may not. But there may, uh, this had uh, deeper water, you know, 20 feet off the island, and there were, there were big snappers in there. And uh, I think we caught, I don't know if we caught a trout in there too, David, or not, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and depending on the salinity issue, um, if you run up this, this is uh, the mouth, um, Roberts River. Okay, Russell. Yeah, and the lane. And the lane Giuseppe river. and I did the lane river. We did the lane. Yeah. Okay, well, I took river. Giuseppe right up here, and he caught a 40-pound tarpon. Nice. With the tide falling out. You'll see there's a little white sign on that conflumerance there. And I knew that was a lane. I didn't realize that that was a Roberts, but that's actually the entrance to the Roberts on the left side. So you can go either one when you go up. You go all the way yeah, up to right. Roberts. And the right Roberts. There on, on Lane River, there's, I was there with Pablo one time, and it, it's a, a short distance. There's a point right here, I think. Yeah, it's right there, he that caught, point. He caught the undersized snook one right after another, you know. Uh, yep. It was fun, fun time if, there. If the tide's falling, uh, and the ranger said that the, the bait fish, they line up on the line between the salinity and the fresh water. So what you're looking for is how much now, right now we got tons of fresh water. So I don't know how productive that would be. But obviously in the drier season, with the falling tide, they're going to be all along this whole edge here. And the, the, this says five, six feet. It's actually like a channel. And it's about three feet over here. There's a big shoal around this. Um, so again, you can pick a spot or actually I've, I've used a trolling motor and drifted across it too. And all of these areas have been productive at different times when I get up in there. So if we're, if we're out till a noon outing, my, my three, four hours is done, you know. <laughs> but uh, let me continue to go on. But that's a beautiful area there in this Lane it's River. And uh, Roberts River, I've been up there once. And like I said, you can go up. There's a, uh, a crossover here. Right here. Cut, uh, cut off. The cutoff, yeah. And that goes over to the uh, North River. Right. And uh, you get up there, it's so quiet, you can hear your murmur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet. And there's a chicky in there. And I've been in there close to sunset, and the whole place just went alive, you know. And of course, there's I had to leave. There's a chicky there, and there's a chicky here uh, on, on the uh, Robert river yeah yeah that's the roberts river cheeky right there yeah and uh if you went up and spent the night you'd have a you have an incredible evening i tell you you'd be all alone too uh but that crosses over to the north river comes back down uh so we got the uh the roberts river the lanes river the com the combination of them here the north river i haven't even had time but look at all these uh points and uh, here's the deep channel here, um, the edges. Uh, you got the, uh, where is it, the Watson River's up here. Okay, same thing. There's a cheeky over here for the Watson River. Uh, this is called the Horseshoe, this area. And uh, there's shallows in here, like flats or shallows, or actually more shoals. Um, there used to be a little, like here, submerged roots, that used to be an island. Um, any of those, there's got to be trout just hanging around all those areas. Um, I, can, I, can vouch, I can vouch for the horseshoe. Yeah. Did you go Especially up along the, the edge winter. or did you work out on the islands out here? It's getting no, better I, now in the winter, fall and winter. Yeah, I, I went up the middle of that channel that goes in between the two islands. 
Yeah, right here. And, and, and uh, up along the shoreline. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a trolling motor. So what I did is I, I, I anchor, I, I pulled up right in between, and I was casting down the middle on all the other sides. Oh yeah, well if you got a current and, through there, that's the ideal situation again. Yeah. So and, uh, I got, I got my limit of trout. That's awesome. That's awesome. Also in here, Tom, secret spot number 47. Right. <laughs> you can anchor along this island and cast in here. I guarantee there's trout coming through. We got trout. Um, Let's see, yeah. we're, we're, you're right west of the midway, right? Yeah, midway. No, this is up here at marker 34. This is before you go into the channel. Okay, so these are the North Islands. Midway Pass is here. Yeah. Okay. Midway Pass, yeah. uh, there's a little uh, lagoon in there with a drainage canal. Uh, I have caught redfish in there. Also, they don't show it, but it's open. It flows through there. There are trout. Henry those has flats. Too. Those are grass flats in Henry's there. Henry's not going to tell you, but I'm going to tell on Henry. Henry caught some redfish in there. Yeah, well, that's because I showed Henry where those redfish were. <laughs> No. Uh, so we went and I I think I took you there, Herman. I missed that big snook. We went, we went there. The, big, the big snook was over here, Henry. It was over here in this uh, area. <laughs> Those are flats too. Okay. All of this uh south of Midway Key, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm on my circle, um sorry. If I'm on my circle and I come off of the uh the lane in the North River, then I'll come out, you can hit the Midway Keys, hit this area in here, and then this point, this point, all these little points uh, along this area here, if you got water pushing around them in the wind, you know, any of these islands are good ambush points. And you get up into this, David Foss, and uh, these is like, uh, these are like um, Hell's Bay. They're actually uh, mangroves in shallow two foot water. And if you cast along those mangroves, that's flats. Okay, so that's my flats category. Um, there's Snook in there. And uh, what's his name? He used to catch redfish. I don't know. He said he Tim caught Case. them over there. Huh? Tim, Case. Tim Case, uh, and I, I think he lied to us. He said he used to catch redfish over yeah. here along the chute. I was with him and he caught redfish and Snook right along this shoreline here. This cheek, south at the of, Cheeky? South Joe Cheeky, yeah. Okay, all right. So maybe he wasn't lying. No, he wasn't. <laughs> and it, it's hard see, bottom along here. You see, if you go through this, you're into two, three foot flats in here with mangroves. You can cast along all of those, and there's probably reds and snook in there. Um, well, it says M, which is mud, and then it says S for sand. Is yeah, it gives it you the marks. Yeah, depends on the tide. Depends on the tide. Yeah. Um, same H thing over hard. here. There are little islands here. There's a deep deep channel and then there's little islands on this side. Okay, so you can feel your way. I mean, you don't have to get stuck. You're not gonna go in there at 30 miles an hour. You're just gonna push pole or take a trolling motor in there. You can work these areas out here. Um, what I had, I had this guy. There. This guy, they show an information thing and they say that it's, uh, um, they say restricted area, ecological reserve, and I says, oh my gosh, what is that? Well, I looked it up. And what it is, as you said, you can't go, you can't go ashore. Okay, so you can still work those areas in there as long as you don't get out of your boat and walk on the land. So that's been, you know, in force forever. But, you know, you can go in as close as you want or as far as you want. I'm just saying that there, these are grassy flats in here. There may be trout, there may be uh, ladyfish and jacks in there. If you start coming up with puffer fish, move to a different place because they seem to have a whole population wherever they're at. They have a whole uh -huh. population, right? Okay, so those are my five secret areas, right? Creeks, points. Well, in along this area here, when you come out of uh, this uh, South, South Joe Cheeky area, I was with Tim Case. Right. Uh, you're moving. Okay. Did you we, fish we in this in, in the channel there or did you fish around the creek? We, we, we came through here and got up in this area and there was trout all over the place. I can't see it. We're up here. Tell uh, me. 
No, I, I don't know if this, well, I've got my cursor on, but you don't see me. No, um, I don't see your cursor. Oh, well. Is your cursor near to what number there? The four or the, or the five or the seven? Or in the <laughs> end? Well, if you go here to seven on, Mud, on, on Joe River, Right. Right, right north of uh, the Cheeky and go through that cut and yeah. up straight straight north in. We call we call it trout 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 until well, we get almost the midway point. That's wild. Okay. They weren't large. They were some of them were keepers, but a lot of fun. A few weeks ago, I went out. I got confused. I came out of here. I went through this. And then I hit this point and this point, and all of a sudden I'm over at the Joe River. I'm going, wait a minute, how did I get there? Because I thought I was up at the, at the lane in the North River, but mm -hmm. I got turned around and came around, and I was, but I wound up somehow, I don't know, maybe over here, and there were wow. tarpon coming through there, tarpon coming through. We couldn't hook mm -hmm. them, but they were just rolling in there, little ones, juveniles, you know, like 25, 30 pounders. Wow. But, and I thought I was up on. <laughs> show you how confused I was. I thought I was up here on the uh, on the Lane River. In fact, I had made a U-turn and come down here. <laughs> and was oh, in man. This area. So uh, I got so confused I had to take out my cell phone and pull out a marine map and try to figure out where the heck I was at. Wow. Uh, you, you're not the only one that's left that river and made the wrong turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, if you get it, the good news is if you get lost, if you start heading south, eventually you're going to hit the Joe River. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can that's find true. your way back. That's true. That's the good news. <laughs> so, yeah, you, know, you don't tell, and you don't tell too many people that you did that. <laughs> no, I know. Well, we're all friends here, right? So, yeah. You know, there's Oyster Bay. I, you know, I can't get into that. There's a chicky up here. There's trout around the chicky. There's a uh, a shoal in here um, that uh, around the island um, where there's uh, redfish. Um, there are redfish up in these areas sometimes, and then the guys when they're uh, when they're going uh, tarpon fishing, they either anchor up up here or over here, you know, it's, and, and it's, wait for them to come. Very Ackland favorite uh, tarpon area. Yeah, that's where they line up. Yeah. Now I got when I when I bought. Uh, I had Ken Napolitano rework my boat, and he sold me his GPS, and he had his his and Jerry uh, Appling's uh, area. Yeah, they, they were catching tarpon. Yeah, Jerry loves that Orsa Bay area for tarpon. And it's up in here, right up in here, around these uh, uh, this this northern north north of Midway Pass, this bay in here. But the thing that Jerry never told you is he's there at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Before the, sunrise, before the sun rises, that's when the tarpon are active in there. They're not going to be active in there at 10 o'clock in the morning, guaranteed. Yeah. But uh, I love Whitewater Bay. I really do. You know? Yeah, I, I love Whitewater Bay. And, and, it's, a, and the, it's a lot of fun. The more, I miss there, it. the more I learn, the more exciting, fun things that I can find in there. So I'll tell you what uh, Mike uh, Haynes does with his yep. friends uh, when he goes out into the Little Shark River area, he likes live bait. So if you have live bait and you're in Little Shark River, all those bends and turns, you'll just right. get a ton of fish. Yeah. yeah. All those areas back and forth between. And, and there are snapper boats. holes in there. There right. are, are uh, uh, mangrove holes. There are uh, gag uh, grouper uh, holes in here too. Glass grouper holes. You see the 16 feet, 10 feet, uh, yeah. 14 yeah. feet. Yeah, right. grouper and that those are rock bottoms yeah. along here. And you can hit Little Shark River and get out of the big current, you know, and you still you can still get all the advantages of being in there too. I used to, you know, I used to go up Joe and then go through Oyster and go in here through all of these, you know, and but now I'm an older man, so I don't do it at all. I you know here I don't need to. Here, I, I get a full you don't have to working in this area right here. You know, and yeah, actually yeah. you can work Coop Bay and you don't even have to get out of that. Tarpon Creek. Mm -hmm. first, the first time I went fishing with my brother-in-law, he says, you stay out here and fish for trout out here. And him and Jimmy Moore, they went in and they trolled Tarpon Creek and came back with like two, two uh, three foot long snooks. 
<laughs> That's nice. I go, hey, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> so anyway. Herman, did you guys see Tarpon and Coot Bay? Did you stop at that spot? Uh, we looked, there were we, nothing rolling. We, we took a quick look. Uh, it was we, super, we super high tide. The water was all the way up. Yeah. I mean, there was no shoreline at all. It just went right back in there. So, uh, uh, and it was just turning when we got out there. So there really wasn't much. It was so long. I think a low tide in Flamingo is at 1030. I don't know what it is in Whitewater. Um, yeah, I got a... We can look it up. Yeah. It'll only move six inches, but it's still, um, the flow in certain areas will be more than the flow in others. It'll seem like it's moving opposite. Well, it can go three feet. It can go three feet. It just depends on uh, what the wind water? are, yeah. Oh, I didn't, never thought that could do yeah. happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smartfishingtides.com. They got white water. You want me to try to find it? I'll go back yeah. to the other share. Hang on. Let me go back to the other share. Got to be a lower earlier. Don't uh, here. Hang on. Share. Come on. Here we go. Okay, so let's let's go to uh, it's called Smart Tide. Smartfishingtides.com. There you go, Florida. Okay, so you get a list. You guys see that? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I've got this marked on my phone. You just pick the name of the place. So in here is uh, Whitewater Bay Tides. And um, they give you everything, man. Right score, I like that. Yeah, hang on, it's coming up. Yeah, they're gonna give you uh, the, the salooner, everything. Where is it? It's time to fish. 4 a.m. Sunday morning. Come on. It's taking. It's taking its time. Right? <laughs> they don't like my browser. So, browser. Herman, what's the name of that website? Smartfishingtides.com. And then you can pick your state. So, Henry, you can do North Carolina. Yeah. It's going to be a major tides there. It says saltstrong.com. All right, I'm getting it here. I'm getting it here. Let me try. Saltstrong. Hey, hey, Tom, I can't, I can't go up real shallow there as I could get stuck when that tide drops. Let's try it. Right. Get out right. and push. I can't even get out and push, no, dude. That no, no, tide is. No. Oh. It's a big tide. I can get. Uh, yeah. I had a friend that fished uh, with a flats boat there. Yeah, I've, I've looked at it. When I'm going to fish this part, there's a lot of flounder and trout and reds. Flounder fishing. A lot of red fish, Henry. Well, Tom son-in-law just moved up there, but he hasn't fished, right, Tom? He's not been he hasn't the boat yet. Fished, he's working his ass off. He's, he's <laughs> sold his big boat, right? So he doesn't have a boat up there yet, right? He doesn't, he's got... Uh, He's got two kayaks up there. That's all. Yeah, he hasn't fished it. I gotta get him out fishing. All right, let's try let's try a different browser. Because it came up on my phone. There it is. I had a guy named Greg Buckman. Okay, so uh now he's in uh, Sunday we got a seven point three. It's a new moon. What does that mean? That's, that's good. That's, that's good. Score. New moon. Can you yep. see it? Here's yeah. the uh, yeah. tide. Tide. Hang on. I'm looking for. Yeah. That's Tuesday. That's yeah, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday. <coughs> Saturday. Sunday. Okay, so we got a low tide at 11 low. at 10:30 a.m. Yeah. That's super low. That's and a strong low. That's strong. That's Those a strong, strong low. It's minus. I think three. these are king tides. Is these are listed? Yeah, as yeah, because it's a new moon. Right. Right. And then here's the uh, the high tide at seven point one feet. So in the morning. We get out in the morning. Seven, we're gonna have the falling tide. We get out there at eight a.m. Yeah. 
but it's going to be sort of in the middle and then it'll fall lower. So those, those would be good times to catch those areas where it's draining out. Here's the, uh, so lunar activity. So of course we're going to be there at the lowest activity time. You got to get there early. <laughs> it's a 5 a.m. <laughs> well, the strong, the stronger tide is the incoming. No, Maybe. it's both the falling and the incoming. Listen, we're going to be there like at eight o'clock, so we're going to have seven thirty. We're going to have a falling tide. Falling tide. Falling tide looks stronger. It'll be zero feet at uh, at uh, what eight thirty. Right. And so we're really going to be on the on the the lower edge of the tide when we're there till eleven o'clock, and then it'll shift. So you may want to go up on the north end when it shifts and start picking up the incoming tide. You got to look for holes, Nilo. You got to look yeah. for those holes. Or Fish work them. the mouths of the uh, the uh, the look rivers. The right. right. Yeah. This is our salooner. So at eight o'clock, it's, it's, it's five a.m. green to eight a.m. Yeah. Five to eight is very good fishing. And the same thing on the incoming, but later in the afternoon. So this is the change of the tide. You know it's going to be slow there. And look, they don't show up picking up till three o'clock. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, all right. So, what time do you guys want to fish till? I want to fish till at least one, like we did last time. Let's do one o'clock. Well, yeah. We can meet back at the fish cleaning station at one o'clock, right? Now, fish till one, meet, meet back around two, whatever. 